Hi, my name is Brian, and for the past 21 years, I've been using Cubase as my main DAW. My love story with Cubase began when I was 13 years old, still living with my parents. A neighbor heard from my dad that I was a young musician playing piano for 10 hours a day. Later that day, said neighbor came over with a copy of Cubase SX. I immediately proceeded to install Cubase on my computer, and before I knew it, I was producing music every waking hour. It wasn't good music, nor it sounded good in particular, but it was my music, and it was my ideas, and for a music lover who's been playing piano for seven years with a creative itch, it was everything. Keep in mind, this was 2002. YouTube wouldn't launch for another three years, so I didn't have any tutorials or videos. All I had was Cubase and my intuition. Fortunately, Cubase was, and still is in my opinion, a very intuitive DAW, and so recording audio, creating MIDI tracks, using VST instruments and effects was kind of a no-brainer. Little by little, I became better at using Cubase and learned its inner workings, features, limitations, and overall crafting my own workflow in my main DAW. A few short years after, I also started making a little money with producing songs for friends and helping more established producers with their own work. And with each version released, Cubase has become better and better. Starting with Cubase 4, they've added Control Room, which admittedly I haven't started using until Cubase 11, but I love it, it's just a great tool. They also added track presets, which are now an integral part of my producing process, which again, I haven't started using until a few years back, but again, love that feature. Also Media Bay, which I love, got a big upgrade alongside a plethora of built-in instruments and plugins that I never used ever. Cubase 5 brought with it a wind of change with features like Fairy Audio, which every Cubase user would argue that it's probably the best native pitch correction tool out there. I personally prefer it over Melodyne, if not only for the fact that it's just there, but I also think it sounds more natural. Cubase 5 also brought with it Expression Maps, which used to be called VST Expression, and if you're an orchestral composer, you already know how invaluable these can be in a composing workflow and how much time they can save using them. They also added more plugins and instruments nobody uses, like Loop Mesh, which is now discontinued, and Groove Agent, which is okay as far as drum samplers go, and Beat Designer, which I literally never heard of until researching for this video. In QA6, we got a very welcome audio comping tool, which even in today's standards, I think is one of the most intuitive ones out there. We also got a group audio warping tool, which lets you quantize multiple audio track at the same times. Excellent for drums, in theory. In reality, it was okay. Also, that feature hasn't been updated since QB6 and was only updated recently in QB12, 11 years later. And besides that, you guessed it, more plugins and instruments nobody cares about. Starting to see a pattern? Also, that's when Steinberg started giving us 0.5 paid version every year with even less exciting features, more like polished versions of older features. But jumping ahead, QB7 gave us newly designed Mix Console, which I really like even compared to other DWs out there. We got Core Tracks, which I don't personally use at all, but I know a lot of users actually really like using that feature. We also got VST Connect, which lets you record other musicians from all over the world directly into your project. I was never successful in getting it to work properly, but I think it had a lot of potential. Perhaps it was just slightly ahead of its time, maybe during pandemic time, this could be a better time to introduce it, and maybe it was just a little too complicated to get it to work. And obviously we got more sounds and more presets. Cubase 8 was kind of a big deal for me. It added VCA faders, which I use very often, and also render and place feature, which I use literally all of the time. And beside that, we got more sounds and plugins that I'd never used ever. Cubase 9 added its first native sampler track for Cubase. It was a very welcomed addition, yet kind of limited compared to the competition. We also got a very handy batch export capabilities, love that, still using that, and we also got some minor yet welcomed updates like undo for mixer changes like volume, pan, and plugin parameters, and more plugins and instruments that I'd never used. It was around Cubase 10 that I started feeling a pattern of Disappointment. Every year, we got a couple of major features that were just compelling enough to get you to pay an upgrade, and a bunch of minor features and improvements alongside a bunch of plugins and instruments that were just trying to keep up with other DWs and their own features. Meanwhile, there were so many features that I wanted to get and never actually gotten them, yet I was seeing other DWs, new ones and existing ones, being updated that they were getting features I've been dreaming of. 
Now, I know that coding a major DAW is no easy task, and if you look at other DAWs and their version log, you would see similar amounts of changes between versions, but the issue was I was noticing so many gaps between Cubase and the competition. Furthermore, with each version released, some of the user's favorite features are either being changed or dropped, making it uncomfortable and frustrating to keep current workflow optimal. For example, up until Cubase 10, Cubase had local undo for individual clips. Let me show you what I mean. I have this project with a MIDI clip and an audio clip. If I go into my MIDI part, I used to be able to change this note around and then change this audio. And then if I go back into my MIDI part, I would used to be able to um, hit Command Z or Control Z and it would undo just the MIDI part. But now, it'll change the audio, and only then it'll change the MIDI note. This was such a welcomed feature in Cubase, and then they just dropped it starting Cubase 10. And I've been looking in the forum of Cubase and Steinberg, people have been asking it for a while, and they didn't have it for Cubase 10, Cubase 10.5, Cubase 11, and now Cubase 12. So four years of not having a really great feature that I actually loved using. Just dropped. Also, in Cubase 12, they changed the way that the logical editor presets are being triggered. So, I used to be able to go into my project, and then project logical editor, and then just trigger the presets from here, but now they're not here. I need to go to apply preset, and then look for my preset from these little drop-down menus. I can search for it, and then I need to hit apply preset. Now, the fact that it's not in the menu means that I can't actually access it in Keyboard Maestro, which is something that I do a lot for my Stream Deck and for my touch screen. And so now I have to go into my keyboard shortcuts, and then I have to add a new macro, and then I have to find the logical editor preset that I want, which is somewhere here, and then I need to add it and then I can trigger that from the menu because it's in a macro. Why not just give it to me in the menu and let me do it in the new dialog? And there are a ton more examples like that that I can show you. I just want to keep this video somewhat short. And since in social media and influencers term, I'm a nobody, allow me to share my wish list for future versions of Cubase that would probably never happen. Routed folders. Almost every DAW out there, including Pro Tools, Logic, Ableton Live, Studio One, and even Bitwig, has the options of making group track also a folder track. So every track that is under your group folder is being routed directly to that track, and you don't have to manually reroute every track that you create like you have to do now. How is this still not a feature in Cubase? Infinite inserts. Ever since I started working with Ableton Live, I was jealous of its plugin capabilities. Adding unlimited plugins to your heart's content, grouping inserts together under one track, and being able to modulate and using macro control that everything is built into Ableton is something that I would pay so much money to have in Cubase. And if not that, Ableton Link. Since I don't think Cubase will ever change its insert layout, which I personally think is a mistake, Give us Ableton Link. You already added it to your iPad's Cubasis app. Why didn't you include it in Cubase 12? Let me work with two DAWs at once. And while we're on the subject of Ableton, how about stealing a few features of its automation? Being able to click parameters and just see the automation is so much better than having to write a little automation for it to pop up. VST Sandbox. Kind of a niche and possibly a very big stretch as far as feature requests, but Bitwig has a really great feature where plugins and instruments are being hosted outside of Bitwig, and so if a plugin crash, your project doesn't. All you have to do is just refresh the plugin and you're back to work. Cubase has been without a doubt the buggiest DAW I've ever encountered when it comes to plugin crashing when loading a project, plugin crashing when working on a project, and even plugin crashing when closing a project. There are so many more features that I would like to have. Even a design change would be a welcomed upgrade. Look at Cubase 4. Now look at Cubase 12. They are insanely similar, and they are 16 years apart. And I would argue that with roughly the same design, it would be nearly impossible to get any substantial upgrades. 
Now, admittedly, yes, every DW looks kind of the same as its earlier versions. However, I do believe that a little refresh is overdue. This user on one of the Cubase pages on Facebook even tried to come up with a solution for the data design of Cubase. And the more I read and the more I talk with colleagues, I see more and more producers ditching Cubase in favor of other DWs with more relevant features and design. Now, I'm being very harsh on Cubase right now. And with all that being said, there is a reason why I'm still a primarily Cubase user. If you're a composer, which I am, Cubase is probably the best DAW you can use. Just ask Hans Zimmer, John Powell, Junkie XL, and countless of successful composers out there. Also, I don't know of any other DAW that lets you interact and control almost every feature available with MIDI controllers, keyboard shortcuts, and other input devices like the Stream Deck, which in terms make it, for me anyway, the fastest DAW you can work on. Most of my videos are based around workflows that are only possible thanks to Cubase's great integration possibilities. Also, Cubase is one of the only DAW out there alongside Pro Tools, Logic, and Digital Performer that supports the Yukon protocol for connecting with the Avid S1, which is one of my most used hardware in my studio. Studio One is a no-go, and then Ableton supports it, but it only supports it using Mackie HUI, which is a protocol from 1997. To put in context, that's one year before Apple announced the original iMac G3, four years before the first iPod ever, RIP. Alongside amazing features like the new MIDI remotes and batch export function like no other, I totally understand why it's hard for me to switch to another DW altogether. Also, you have to give props for Steinberg for not introducing a subscription plan. I think my point is, I feel that we, the dedicated Cubis user community, we are a rare breed. In an ocean full of beat makers and producers dominating the YouTube realm with Ableton videos and tutorials and presets, it's always refreshing seeing another Cubase user. I can personally attest to some of my most successful connection and friendships being formed over just being a Cubase user. But more and more recently, I feel that the bond is over its problems and shortcomings instead of its great features and capabilities. And every time that I try to convert a colleague to the Cubase side, it's becoming harder and harder to recommend Cubase as a DAW because it's lacking a lot of features that DAWs like Ableton and Bitwig offer. And these features recently became as basic as a record and looping function in a DAW. What do I think Steinberg should do? I don't know, I've never been a part of a development team for a major DAW, but what I do know is that I've been using Cubase for the past 21 years almost every day. And as much as I love it, and as much as I love using it, it's starting to be harder to ignore the other options out there. Anyways, that's pretty much it for me. If you stuck around this far, thank you so much. Uh, let me know what your thoughts about all of this. Do you agree? Am I just being overdramatic or maybe too picky? I would love to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you love about Cubase, what you want to see in future updates in the comment section below. And of course, stay creative, stay awesome. I'll see you in the next one.